the first in the series of uh, Let's Talk, Let's Act. Uh, the idea behind this series is to kind of inspire us all to make small changes that can hopefully make um, some positive, uh, positive changes and uh, continue uh, the growth and sustainability in our industry. Um, with that, I'm going to go through some very quick uh, housekeeping uh, rules. So um, there is the chat function, as I said, um, but the video is also on, but the chat function is there for um, discussions and to ask questions. Um, we do ask that you write down your name and company when you ask a question, just so we know who you are and where you're coming from. Um, and uh, we can either, if you're doing it in the chat, we'll ask the question on your behalf. Um, but if you want to ask the question through the video or audio, then please raise your hand and um, we will, uh, you can ask a question through that. Um, Yolandi is um, the moderator, so I will leave it up to her on how she uh, decides to take the questions. Um, she can do them either during or um, at the end. We'll just, I guess, see how it, uh, see how it all goes. Um, and with that, uh, I'm going to uh, hand over to Yolandi to introduce herself and uh, the rest of the panelists. Thank you, Yolandi. Oh, thank you, Bijal. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. So my name is Yolandi Robinson. I am the peering co coordinator at Map Africa. I joined uh, the company about four years ago and have been with the team uh, for over three years now. And yeah, that's me. Now, uh, if the panelists could also uh, introduce themselves, we have Kayla, Stavros, and Clarissa. So we can start with Kayla. Hi, um, I'm Kayla Clifford. I work over at Netflix as a partner engagement manager for the US, Canada, and Africa. And I've been working at Netflix for a little bit over a year now. I started back in May. Stavros? Yes. Uh, hi there. My name is Stavros Kusandaras. I'm a senior network engineer in NAM6. I'm uh, 32 years old and I'm working in the industry since 2014. And uh, with NAM6, I work approximately three and a half years and started my role here as a junior network engineer, but I managed to level up. And uh, here I am now working in the NOC team, taking care of all customer uh, problems, requirements, and then on six platform itself. Clarissa? Hi, I'm Clarissa Ferreira. Um, I'm uh, the operations manager at an ISP in South Africa, Web Squad. And I've been with Web Squad for about four years now. Okay, cool. So that is our panelists for today. Thank you guys for the introductions. Um, I want to start off this panel discussions with um, each panelist giving a one pro, one con about being a youth in the, in the industry. Um, so of course, I'll start uh, it off as this is my idea. <laughs> So one pro, I think, of being a young person in the industry is that I think I keep my uh, team very entertained, especially with the questions. And because I'm still learning, you know, they might get a bit annoyed, but I mean, I'm funny, so it kind of helps. Um, and then a con, I think, personally, is that I have not been here since, uh, you know, the internet started. So I find it hard to kind of engage in discussions where we talk about the evolution of the internet. So, I mean, terms like what uh, dial-up, Windows 95, IRC, and fax, those are things I never use in my daily life. I don't know about you guys. I've never even spoke to my friends about it. Uh, but, yeah, that, that's one of the things I... I don't know, it's, it's a good thing, but a bad thing that I wasn't here when it started. Um, so Kayla, would you like to tell us what is your pro and con? Sure thing. Um, I'd say for my pro that it is definitely um, having time on your side because you have more time to make mistakes and learn new things. And in a lot of cases for younger people in the industry, 
you might not have things like um, children or you might not have a husband or wife or anything like that. So you have a little bit more time to get your skills set and, and learn more from other people, engage more. Um, as a con, I would say that also because you aren't, you haven't been in the industry as long, you're usually challenged a bit more when you are talking to someone who's been in the industry a bit longer than you have. Um, I find sometimes when it gets, when we get on the same subjects, they just assume that I don't know what I'm talking about because I'm young. So oftentimes you have to be on, on, at the top of your game all the time when in these conversations that can t start off pretty casual. Okay, and Clarissa? Brian Kwan. Okay. Um, so a pro, I would say, um, I feel like people to, and not specifically, I would say more mature people in this industry, but in other industries, they tend to trust younger people that they assume younger people know what they're talking about when they talk about tech. They won't necessarily perhaps buy into your solution, but there's a general assumption that younger people understand tech better and know what they're talking about, which I think is a pro for us. Um, a con I would say is that there's kind of a, a barrier of entry in terms of new business. Maybe that's just my experience in South Africa where the more, the kind of the bigger and established companies, um, the more mature staff have relationships with each other and then for the younger tech startups it's a bit difficult to kind of break into that barrier and you know whilst that's fair because they've like you know worked on that relationship and fostered that relationship through the years it's sometimes difficult for a younger person to kind of create a, a new relationship okay and Stavros um yes um well you already <laughs> said quite some uh, stuff <laughs> um yeah i would say that uh, as a pro um young people bring nice and fresh ideas uh, and a lot of energy to implement these ideas i've seen this happening with myself but also with other uh, young colleagues you know, we always come with uh, these cool ideas and let's build it, let's implement it. You know, we go in a nice uh, rush way, mot fully motivated to do it. And uh, that's really cool. And uh, I think some uh, mature teams usually lack this uh, spirit, this energy. They just have the job done, but they don't have the uh, energy and motivation to do the step further. Um, However, as a con, I would say that uh, what we have as young people uh, is usually the learning curve, right? So it takes more time to uh, to understand some, uh, let's say, complex technologies or some uh, complex ideas or actually even the experience, right? We we have a good, we have a high fail rate, mistake rate, because we are still young, we're still learning. But that's also part of the game, right? I mean, we are young, so knowledge comes from the mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. And uh, I would say that this is con because some companies uh, don't give you the time to learn from your mistakes, uh, the opportunity to learn from your mistakes. So this is uh, something that uh, maybe could be a blocker in your further career. Let's say some companies or some markets do not easily act get young people because of this reason uh so i would put it as a con but depends also how companies uh, see it how employers see it some employers mm -hmm. can really uh, accept the young people and they can accept their mistakes and they motivate them to learn from them and go further and develop um that's that's for me Okay, so very interesting um, points made. Um, I like what uh, Clarissa and Stavros has brought up is the new ideas. So I agree that, you know, um, the younger generation tend to bring new ideas uh, depending on the technology available now, whereas 
uh, sometimes we do find that companies stick with what they know and is not open to change, uh, which, you know, is kind of funny because as, you know, being in the tech industry, we know it changes every day. So we kind of have to keep up with it. Um, and some companies just don't do that. Um, as well as Clarissa with the re relationship building, I agree with that. It is quite intimidating to break out into the networking scene, you know, getting to know the people in the industry, especially if you are kind of on your own, you know, if, if you left just to go out there. Um, it's always nice to have someone like a colleague who has been in the industry for a while to actually introduce you to the relevant people and just to, you know, make you more comfortable in that space because it's something quite new. Um, and going on from that, um, I think mentoring is a very important thing in this industry because I think we are very unique in a sense where, I mean, uh, we had discussions the other day about, you know, how we dress to conferences. So most conferences, um, you know, like Arrive, the URI X, um, we usually, you know, like this, you dress your T-shirt and your tackies and that's how you go. It's not very formal, but if you're new into a workspace, you are like, okay, I need to dress up, I need to impress which is not necessarily the way to go because the tech people don't want to talk to someone that is sales, uh, which you are not. Um, so, I mean, Clarissa, this is actually something I want to ask you as you are new into this industry, you're, you're transitioning now. <laughs> so I actually want to ask you, what, is, what are your thoughts on mentoring? Do you think it's, it's, an important thing to, uh, you know, to have a mentor to actually show you around in the industry, just to break into that space. Yeah. So, no, I think it's very important. Um, look, I didn't come from this, like any kind of technical background. I came from a legal background. And so being in this industry was not on my 10 year plan at all. So it's by chance that I landed here not a bad thing at all um but having a mentor to just you know guide me um you know i feel like it would be a great benefit obviously you know there are some skill sets that i could work on um especially because i don't have a formal qualification in this industry um you know you don't know exactly where you're lacking or where you can improve um and then just also touching on what you said about networking um, you know, having a like a mentor kind of help you build that professional network, introduce you to people, um, especially because it's quite intimidating if you're in a position where um, it's not really technical and then you have to engage with people, not on a technical basis, but come from a perspective where you are in the industry, but you're not dealing with technical things every single day which can, maybe it's just me, but it can be intimidating at times. So perhaps having a mentor that can just kind of make that a little bit easier for you and, you know, guide you a little bit, um, I think it's very important. Yes. Um, yeah, and like you say, transitioning from like a legal background, I have no idea what goes on there, but I can imagine it's very formal. It's very different to how we do things here. Um, Kayla Stavros, would you like to add on that? Do you guys think it's important to have a mentor in this space, you know, just to inspire you basically um, and make you more comfortable in what you're doing? I would definitely say yes. Um, I think especially when you're looking for career guidance and onto like what you want to do in the future, what your goals are, and how to achieve those goals. It's really good to have somebody that you can kind of bounce ideas off of and get that real world experience. Um, because like for me personally, I transitioned from a small ISP um, to Facebook. And when I was transitioning, I was really unsure of if I was ready to work at a company like Facebook. And I started talking to my mentor about it and just asking him like, well, do you think that this would be a good you know, path for me to take, even though I don't have that much experience in the industry? 
And my mentor was nothing but positive. He said that you have to look at this as just like another challenge that you're going to get through. And you're going to keep getting challenges, but that's just how the tech industry works. And even though you don't know everything, you can't know everything in the tech industry. It's not possible. So you just have to take this in stride and see and do the best that you can do. And just having that somebody there who, you know, who's kind of been there before, who's, who has that background, who knows that, you know, you may not know everything, but no one knows everything, I think really helps. Um, also, just having somebody who has the, um, the network as well, like as you touched on, that could be, I mean, groundbreaking for somebody who's new in the industry, especially like when you have somebody who can introduce you to other people who are out there, other companies, um, you know, get you into events that you normally wouldn't know about otherwise, and just get you involved in the community because the community itself can be a little overwhelming for somebody who's new. So it's good to have somebody who can take you under their wing. Is it me? <laughs> yes, it's done. Yes. Um, I think Kyle said uh, everything I would like to say. <laughs> 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 she was very concrete and uh, the answer was full. Uh, I totally agree. You, especially when you are young, you need a mentor. Um, from many aspects, not only to guide you through your career, uh, especially if you are young and you're still unsure what path you need to take, but also even when you work uh, in your company and you do projects uh, and uh, you, t- you sometimes get uh, tough projects uh, even from the beginning of your uh, career uh, or your beginning of your um, path. I found myself, for example, having a huge and difficult project in my previous company where I got lost uh, several times because it was so big and uh, it was um, so hard and I didn't have the knowledge and the experience to work on it. Uh, but I had a good uh, manager back then that guided me. And of course, he didn't know everything. As Kayla said, you cannot know everything, but he managed to guide me to the correct persons uh, over the time to get the required knowledge and experience, of course, and get the answers I want in order to step further. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I would be very, very lost. And uh, the, thanks to this guy, I managed to deliver a nice uh, proof of concept that I managed also to present on a right meeting. And that was really, really motivating. Uh, mm-hmm. So now you see that you need a mentor from many aspects of your uh, in your career, and um, especially when you are young and you don't know where to go, where to search, uh, how to find uh, the replies, the answers, the people that have this knowledge. So it's it's also a big industry, right? So we need to make our own connections as well to the correct people to get the answers. And this is something that unfortunately takes time and you will always learn new people and you'll always make new connections. Yes, I think, like you said, Stavros, Kayla kind of answered everything. Um, You know, from my side as well, um, I was fortunate enough that my team, my whole team of four, well, we are four, um, they are great mentors to me as well. I mean, when I started at the company, I didn't exactly say, I want to be a Peering coordinator. I didn't even know what peering was back then. And, you know, piece by piece, these guys built me up to where I am today. And I'm still learning. As Kayla said, you can't know any, everything. Um, and that's kind of where I am at the moment. You don't know everything, but you are still learning. And it keeps me motivated to know that my team supports me. Um, in in that sense and I just feel that if you are new to the industry young or it doesn't matter you need that somebody that supports you in what you do and can give you some guidance as to how how you can achieve what you want to achieve Uh, I just want to go over to some of the questions Uh, we have one here from I think you pronounce it Dinesh I apologize if I pronounce the name wrong I see a thumbs up. Thank you. So, um, yeah, he says, we also had a higher failure rate when we were young. However, 
are the changes we see now due to a more mature industry with companies not wanting to take the risk ends much more specialization in smaller parts of tech per person? Um, that's an interesting question, and I think I'm going to give it over to Stavros. Um, <laughs> so, Stavros, any thoughts you'd like to share on that? Um, for me, it looks like more like a comment, I would say. Um, but what do you, do you think um, yeah. it's true that companies do feel they, they don't want to take that risk? Uh, I think yes. Nowadays, uh, with the pace that the economies uh, move forward and they develop themselves and expand, the more likely look for uh, immediate solutions, immediate answers, immediate replies and responses to this uh, huge expansion that takes place in a short period of time that uh, lead them uh, to get people which are more ready and more mature into specialization of a subject or with a big uh, experience in the industry rather than take uh, some young people and develop themselves uh, and develop these people to according to their needs. I think it's because they don't have the time as well to develop. Uh, and the managers, you can see that they always are busy doing stuff, meetings and so on. So they very negative to, to train people. Um, I think this applies to quite some small to medium companies. I think the big companies, maybe like uh, Netflix or Facebook, Kyle knows, I think they have some programs to get the young people to uh, to uh, train them and guide them. Like an intern, internships, you know, yes. exactly. And uh, in our industry, ISPs, uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't see a lot. I, I see. I see from my from my career, uh, from my master's student, my master's program. I see a lot of people, a lot of colleagues uh, from my, the masters going to big companies like Deloitte and PwC doing some consulting. I don't see the, a lot of them going to ISPs or IXPs like me. Mm -hmm. I, and that really, I don't know, feels really bad. I, I think I think it should be the opposite, right? It should be more uh, people going to, into ISPs, IXPs, carriers, telcos. Uh, because I mean, I come from an engineering background. That's, I should see the guys going there, but instead of that, mm. they go to Deloitte because Deloitte has a nice program to develop okay. into young people and they take young people. Mm. I, I don't know. Point. Yeah, it's I don't say it's correct, point. but... Um, no, yeah. I understand. But you understand That's, the point, yeah. Yeah, it is a good point because like you say, um, there are some of these big companies that have internship programs available for um, you know, young students or young people to try out and learn. Um, and uh, it is true what you say. I also personally don't see a lot of those programs in the ISP space, um, you know, especially for like network engineers and developers and so, uh, so on. So the smaller companies, I agree, it is um, a bit harder to get in there as a young person. Um, I see we have another comment from Vinesh. Um, how many of us who are potential sponsors have the mindset that we will nurture the mentee or junior staff to take over our role or job? I think that is the important question to ask and one which I think is the reason that new entrants find themselves feeling alone. Um, I agree with that as well. Um, uh, a, a lot of the, you know, the people in the community feel like they do not want to share, you know, the secrets of what they do or how they do it. Um, which I'm not saying tell me all your secrets, but um, what I'm, what I think we should do more is like knowledge sharing. You know, again, it's coming back to guiding. Uh, this young person to do the job as it should be done, you know, and if you leave them to kind of do their own thing, you might not get the result that you want as a company and then feel, okay, this person does not belong here. 
but actually it could be because of you know this person not knowing how because nobody is showing them how um that's my thought on it would you guys have any clarissa stavros kayla would you like to comment on that nothing i see you guys looking at me like what? <laughs> yeah, i'm reading the question <laughs> It's just trying to make sure I have an understanding of the question. Okay. So it was from Dinesh at 4.25 p.m. Okay. May I, um, may I make it yes. clearer? Yes. Yes. Okay. Please. So basically, one, one of the things, one of my ethos has always been when I had staff of my own, I mean, I'm independent now, but when I had staff of my own, it was always a case of, actually, I need to nurture the staff. What I need to do is I need to make sure that they can take over my job at whatever point it is, even if it's tomorrow. Um, yes. Because the thing is, I, I always felt that actually mentoring staff that way uh, and nurturing them if they wanted to go that way was important because that means it's a better industry. So mm -hmm. in some ways, I feel what happens is as as we get older, we become territorial and we go, actually, this is my job and they don't know how to do this. And I'm actually <laughs> much more experienced in this, so I'm going to hold on to this. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing that as, men as mentors, what we need to do is we need to go, actually, we are heading towards retirement and why don't we even think about early retirement? The youngsters who are in, one, are coming with new ideas. They're going to be thinking about new technologies and actually let them get on with it. So what we, can, what we should be doing is we should be nurturing that and forgetting about where we want to be because you know we've done that while we were young you know when i when i joined the industry i thought like okay i'm going to get to this stage and that's what i'm going to do and this is what i'm going to do and okay not not everything has gone to plan but the thing is i'm happy with where i am and you know I, you think about succession planning and all that stuff but i think those of us who are older need to think seriously and go actually Yes, they are the new generation. We need to hand over the reins. Let's do whatever we can right now without thinking about ourselves. And I think that's, uh, that, that's where my question was heading. Um, and, and I think mentoring needs to change in terms of um, how it's conducted. Yes, I, I agree with that. Thank, Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was a great response, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. I think that we, we as the younger people need the older generation to kind of look ahead and understand that you know they do want to retire and we do want to you know step in and get those those bigger roles but we have to meet in the middle somewhere where you know we can exchange knowledge and the younger people are open to ask the stupid questions and get past that kind of fear factor of you know, am I saying the right thing? Am I, you know, do I have enough of the right skills? We need to just kind of get aligned with their goals and what goals they need to, or what they need to get to where they want to be in the industry. And then see what we, what the older generation can do to get them there. And not only that, I think we can also look at more events that are tailored toward younger people. We don't really have that right now. We have conferences, and I think conferences have a lot of value in themselves, but it would be amazing to have at least maybe, um, maybe just a section or a session that is available for young people to talk about like the stupid questions, the challenges that they're having, the insecurities, and to be able to voice that, hey, I'm, tr I'm doing my best, but I'm lost. I'm not sure where to go from here. Does somebody have you know, experience where they can help me? Something that simple can mean worlds to a younger person because a lot of them, speaking from my own experience, a lot of them may feel like you know, they're intimidated by older people. Like, feeling lost yourself is hard, just like no matter what age you are. But when you're younger and you're surrounded by people who are already, you know, well set in their careers and well experienced, it just feels like you have a kind of a invisible weight on your shoulders that nobody can see. I agree with that, Kayla. And mm -hmm. I see our uh, attendees are kind of going into our next topic in the chat. So we'll start with Aileen. Uh, 
Guys, if I read your name wrong, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm trying here. <laughs> Young person. Um, so uh, she says, uh, Yulani, Kayla mentioned needing mentors and others to assist with introductions and in invitations to events. How are you, are you, as younger industry people, finding the move to digital events? Have you managed to expand your network since the events went digital? What would help you to get to know more people and build new, deeper relationships in the industry? What would you like to see the more established industry people do? That's a lot of questions, Aileen. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, that's a very good question, and that is going to Kayla. Uh, you know, especially with the COVID-19 thing that we faced this year, obviously we all know that digital is now the way to go. And um, I, I think it's quite difficult because it's not, it's not kind of I can walk up to someone and say, hi, I'm Yolandi. Um, you know, on a platform, it's it's a bit more difficult because it's not like you can just email the person and see their reaction. Sometimes you wait days, weeks, months for a reply because this person does not know you. So personally, I find it a bit more challenging um, to meet new people and to build that relationships. But Kayla, what do you think? Do you find it easier? Like maybe there's something wrong with me. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> not exactly. <laughs> I will say that the um, the virtual meetings, I think, are helpful, um, especially for people who normally can't attend the regular meetings mm. for, you know, the distance, for the price, all of those things, the time off, all of that. So there is value there. But when it comes to the networking aspect, I, I personally haven't found um, much value yet. Uh, I have only attended um, the recent Nanog that was virtual. Uh, so I only have that to go off of as of right now. But I really think there's way more value in meeting face to face and having that, you know, that one on one time to chat versus like a virtual meeting where there's a bunch of different windows, everyone's talking at once, that kind of thing. Um, there's a value in the intimacy of being able to just have like a hallway conversation at a conference. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think that we still have a lot of ways that we can connect with other people though. Like just because we are limited to virtual doesn't mean that, you know, that's the end all. We can still connect to people over things like Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Twitter. Um, th those are just a few of the platforms that you can reach out to somebody just to ask a question or you can look in their profile for LinkedIn, for instance, and see like, oh, I've always wanted to do this position at this company. Let me ask this person like what it's like. It may not work, but it's something that you can do yourself that just takes a little bit of effort on your part and could end up you know, putting you in a really valuable position. I've had people reach out to me over LinkedIn that I don't know personally, just asking about various different things with Netflix and my background and even the university I went to and things like that. And I've never had a bad conversation from that. I'm always willing to help anybody who has a question. If you need me to get you in touch with somebody from Netflix, I can try to do that, you know, best of my abilities, that kind of thing. It's just you have to, you have to think a little bit more creatively than you normally mm. would. So find ways to, you know, make it happen okay. for yourself. I totally agree with that. Stavros, Parissa, what, what is your thoughts on, on the whole virtual thing? Has it been working? So I think... Um, pro and a con um meeting someone in person it's just a little bit more personal so kayla mostly covered it it's just you can read a room a little bit easier um i think it's easier to make a connection with someone if you are face to face um but in a virtual setting it might be a little bit easier to approach someone that you wouldn't normally approach um if you were face to face maybe someone who has a bit more experience than you it's maybe a little bit less intimidating to send them a message on LinkedIn or whichever platform um, because, you know, you don't have to see them face to face. And if they don't reply, you're not 
you know, embarrassed and red faced because it's not, you know, personal oh. in their face. And that maybe makes it easier, but I do think it's, it, you have to get used to it. Yeah, it is a change. Stavros, your thoughts? Mm, yes. Um, you look like someone that prefer virtual stuff. <laughs> not really, to be honest, exactly the opposite. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, although I'm uh, quite uh, isolated in my own world, in my own room, with my <laughs> doing stuff. Uh, when it comes to meeting new people uh, and socializing, I do prefer the face-to-face. So actually, to be honest, I miss the meetings, uh, like mm. the right meeting, no, no, and so on. Because uh, there's a lot of value in these meetings. I personally randomly I would say met so many interesting people in the industry even the older ones the more experienced ones and we exchanged ideas and I do miss the fact that you are on a coffee break you meet someone you are you immediately exchange knowledge and you open the laptop and you start doing stuff uh, out of nowhere and this thing you cannot really do it now in the virtual world you actually go in a meeting because uh, someone asked you to join or Okay, if it is an open meeting, like a virtual ITF or Nano, yeah, okay, there's a presentation, there are a lot of people, there's not much interaction. And I would say, okay, this virtual world is nice to to retain your existing connections, but to expand it, um, I think we have to go into different strategy. It's not really easy and fast. Mm. I personally have tried on LinkedIn. Um, it's going to sound funny, but I found a few um, people in the same line of work as myself, also peering coordinators. And I actually just want to reach out to, to know, what do you do? Like, how do you do it? You know, I just want to know. Um, so LinkedIn to me is my go-to platform to kind of expand my relationships, um, you know, to try and build new relationships and meet new people. Uh, but it is quite hard because, like I say, some, not, a, not everyone is, you know, fixed to LinkedIn. So they don't always check, uh, you know, yes. the notifications and all of that. So it kind of goes, it takes a while, but once they finally uh, reply, you can initiate that conversation, um, oh. which I find funny that still even though we are in COVID that there hasn't really been a change you know it's not like people are kind of going onto LinkedIn and seeing what's going on in the industry it's still kind of um, just the same old same old people posting stuff on LinkedIn which it actually would be helpful if um, more people would communicate over LinkedIn because from there, you can take it to the next level. Like, can we do a virtual meeting to do kind of what we are doing today? Just a video chat, kind of talking to each other. Um, so it does take a while. And I also um, like the in-person meetings more. Um, it's a bit more personal. And I mean, if, if you want to chat to someone, you can just say, hey, let's get a coffee. And it's just easier as to, like on this, like, I can't just, speak to only Bijal, everybody would hear me. You know, it's, yeah. it's not the same type of thing. Um, just well, in, in, my, in my case, because I'm mostly on the engineering part, I would say, yeah, LinkedIn might be an option, but my experiences didn't always work right. For example, <laughs> I, I was reading an RFC and I saw this, uh, it was an engineer, a very, an old guy, but very much guy. I found him on LinkedIn and uh, I wanted to connect with him to get some extra questions uh, uh, answered. But unfortunately, because we didn't have common connections, friends, oh, whatever, he didn't accept oh. my request. Oh, no. And uh, yeah, he put my request, uh, you know, on trash bin. He sent me a message, sorry, I don't know you. I will not accept the request. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay, so you oh, understand that, okay, if you are on the sales sales uh, side, you know, peering coordinator side, I mean, people might be more open because they don't want to do business, but on the engineering level, it's a little bit uh, the opposite. <laughs> so, I don't know you. Yeah. So, I don't know you, sorry. Bye. Uh, thank you. 
<laughs> anyway, at the end of the story, I found my answers, of course. But okay, and, you know, yeah, because I live. But you didn't people. make a friend. That's the problem. And you know, is one of the challenges that you have as a young engineer or a young person coming to the industry, right? So your 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 circle of connections is very small. So. Uh, which is uh, that was one of the it limits reasons. you yeah one of the reasons I prefer these meetings none of them and so on is that because you these guys usually go there and one way or the other they might have a speech or they might have a circle that uh, discuss with other guys in coffee breaks so you will find them you can get there so the good thing with the meeting is that people are dedicated to the meeting they go there for three days five days you know they also try to meet and expand um, mm. via we LinkedIn. Yeah, it's actually as you said, people don't. It's a challenge. LinkedIn. It's it's a very challenging way. Okay, so let's move on. So, guys, I do see the comments in the chat. Um, thank you for participating. I like the engagement. I hope the other panelists are also reading in case I miss something. Um, let's see, we have some very positive uh, responses on what we've said. I like this one, young people are users of the things this industry creates. Us experienced people would be foolish to think that there is nothing that we can learn from younger people. Uh, question, oh, here's a question from Dinesh again. Uh, but I think we kind of, Dinesh, that we answer you. You still need clarification yeah. for the platform. <laughs> and it um, feels retired. So Dinesh, <laughs> respond. Please accept me on LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, so moving on to education and again, just touching on job security as we did earlier uh, with Dinesh making the statement in terms of mentoring. Um, one of the things I brought up a few times is something like a fellowship. So, I mean, Clarissa also mentioned earlier, she does not have a formal degree for this industry, which I find is common in our industry. Like a lot of people went off to school and studied something completely different to what they are doing today. Um, so, what kind of what I want to touch on is, and this goes to Stavros, is is a formal degree the only justification? You know, when applying for a job at a new company, do you think that, you know, the degree is the only thing that they should look at? Um, I mean, we have the option to do a lot of online courses, a lot of short courses that has a lot more value because it's updated. It, it's telling us what's happening now in the technology space, what we need to know now. But personally, I think companies or a lot of companies are still only looking at the formal stuff like a degree. Um, what are your thoughts on it? Um, good question, thanks. Um... I okay. Let's 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 be honest to ourselves. Uh, a formal degree is a good way to step into not only our industry but any industry, right? Biology, whatever. Uh, and actually, is the way to step into let's say faster, because it guarantees that you have a good at least theoretical background, right? And uh, then you can just uh, start picking up the hands-on experience. Uh, after a certain level quite quickly so um, that's why people go to universities and that's why people study uh, but i think that uh, in our industry in uh, the it and uh, networking and also and more specifically in software development it's more easier i would say uh, you can do the job even without studying just because you're passionate about the subject and you by yourself self-educate and learn by following uh, online courses or by learning uh, from uh, experience. Like you have a goal, you have a project in mind, you try to implement it. Let's say uh, you're going to create your own uh, uh, Facebook 2, Facebook 3, mm -hmm. right? So you start developing and you learn as you go. And uh, I would absolutely admire these people who learn by the journey 
And uh, I definitely, if I had the possibility to interview a person like this and uh, maybe hire him, I would consider this uh, as, a, as the same thing. Like, uh, it doesn't matter for me if you have uh, done university studies or you finished a huge project which became a success and then you sold your startup to a bigger company. Still, for me, you have the same level. Or maybe because you did it by yourself, actually, I would say you get more <laughs> points <laughs> to be hired instead of uh, yeah finishing a degree on the university because this gives you also ex proves to me that you have extra motivation right so you have you bypassed also the stereotypes of the community with a uh, university and the studies and so on and by yourself took this huge journey and you accomplished it and you're here mm -hmm. next to me and you face uh, the same uh, criteria in order to get the job well done. So um, I think IT can offer these uh, opportunities uh, to young people. And uh, yeah, I think we, we can move towards a community or a future where we are not uh, tightened with uh, uh, university studies. They are important, mm -hmm. of course. They're good. They can uh, guarantee to the employer, to the company, a certain degree of knowledge and experience to the young uh, persons but I don't think I don't think it's very mandatory yeah, because as I mentioned um, you know a lot of people go and study something completely different after school thinking oh I'm going to be a doctor or uh, you know a teacher and then they end up let's say in the networking space or um, software developing space um, and then also something I would like to raise um, that I've picked up is the fellowships that we have available. Um, some conferences do um, support fellowships whereby if you are a student, you have to meet a certain criteria to apply and uh, you then uh, qualify to be sponsored to actually, um, you know, attend the um, meeting. Um, to kind of mentor you, to, to do an introduction, yeah. to show you around and what it's like, which is a very nice concept. I fully support that. However, my question was around students. So they say a lot of the fellowships um, require you to be a student. Now, this means you are a full-time student, not working. So, and this goes to all panelists, um, I'd like to hear your thoughts, but if you are new to the industry, um, such as myself, when I started um, at the company, I did not have my formal degree, um, but I started at the company and only now am I studying. So technically I'm a student, but I do not qualify to do a fellowship because I'm working at the moment. And why this is kind of, a uh, sensitive thing to me is, I don't know, I don't fully agree with all the criteria because uh, we had a discussion as well. For instance, we have um, like the Nanogs, the Blackniks, the Apniks, all of those uh, conferences happening. And it just feels like it's very constricted. You know, just certain people can join. Um, should we, I don't know, change the criteria a bit? Um, to give, uh, you know, young newcomers, not even just young, just newcomers the opportunity to attend these conferences, you know, to get that experience as well. Uh, yeah, I really think that we should definitely change that criteria because especially for the technical industry, I feel like although there is a lot of value in a degree, there is so much value in experience as well and having a degree on its own can be kind of limiting when comparing it to real world experience like for me personally when i started in the industry i was in the middle of pursuing my degree i was going part-time to school and then working full-time as well and for me, that was that to me personally felt like the only way that I could really move forward. Um, while I was working in school, it was really hard to find anybody who would hire me while I was mm. just going to school. 
they were saying, oh, you don't have experience. So I'm like, okay, well, let me figure out how to get experience then. So I applied to a ton of companies and they're like, well, you don't have a degree. So <laughs> yeah, like, sorry. It's yeah. like it's time to say, okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, I don't I'm trying to get in to school and I'm trying to get into the industry, you know, I'm trying to get through both in some way. So like this was my only option <laughs> at the time. Um, but I think that if we're looking at industry experience, I would consider somebody who has less than like five years of experience, like new to the industry. And I think that could qualify all on its own, just like a degree would, because it takes you four mm. years to get a degree. So less than five years experience, like it, it adds up. So I just think that when we're looking at this, this particular industry that we need to focus more on like what what the majority of newcomers have do they have experience do they have a degree like and even if they do like what why can't they attend these kinds of events like what separates like them? that is an opinion too <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'm> kitty agrees <laughs> but i totally agree with you kayla it is quite hard um you know as you said uh, companies would not take you in because you have not completed your degree as yet. Um, uh, it is challenging um, if you do not have a degree, but I mean, it also took me a while to decide what's, what do I want to do? What do I want to study? What do I need? You know, because as I mentioned to you guys, when I started at the company, it was not like I, I got you and I had a plan, you know, it just kind of happened. And now that you know, with the guidance from my team, I've now discovered, oh, this is what I like, this is what I want to do. And I mean, it's, it's years after I've joined the company. So, um, you know, the, and that's why I say a lot of companies are very close to giving young people the opportunity to prove themselves or to actually find themselves what, what they like. Um, yeah. And just I, assist them in that. Because yeah. as, as a student, you know, if you're just finishing high school, you don't know what you want to do with your life. You know, <laughs> you will never know. You know, it's always changing. But at least you have that guidance from the company to show you what possibilities um, there is, um, which I think more companies should do or consider at least. Um, and before then I, oh, yes. sorry, just to get back on that, before I was in the technical industry, I was in the restaurant industry. So I was walking into my first interview for a knock position with um, experience at a restaurant and <laughs> only half a degree in progress. So <laughs> they looked at that and were just like, well, not exactly <laughs> what we would hire typically. <laughs> And I just had to tell them, like, I will work very hard and I really want this, you know. Like, uh, they had to kind of, yeah, like they just had to kind of <laughs> take my word for it and take a chance on me. And the person that got hired with me actually had a full degree. So there were two sure. people that were hired. There was me and the person with the full degree. So I already felt like I was at a disadvantage when the person with the full degree got hired, but we did the same work and I was able to keep up with everything she was. So mm -hmm. it really, like a degree is great to have, but that yes. doesn't mean that the person, you know, that doesn't have the degree isn't completely capable of everything that the person who has a degree can do. I think this, exactly. uh, I think this mentality gets outdated nowadays with a degree. I mean, of course, it's useful, but uh, yeah, uh, it's, I mean, the motivation, the self motivation, the, the achievements that you uh, accomplished, I think, give more uh, value to your CV rather than uh, having two degrees. Mm. I see we have a comment here from Dinesh. Feedback from the panel on how we can achieve this would be great feedback for us to take and implement this. Uh, Dinesh, is this on fellowships? Uh, yes, it's it's on um, sponsorships and and fellowships and things um, for people attending um, conferences where so, they aren't can't afford it themselves or something, or their bosses aren't sending them because they're too junior, for example. Good. So that is something I'm very passionate about around the fellowship things because, as you mentioned here. Um, 
diversity of thought and opinion. So um, I actually mentioned to um, the tea or the panel yesterday that I think, as mentioned, this is just an example. I'm not like pointing out, but <laughs> for instance, um, if we look at, I think, Nanok, for instance, because Kayla mentioned Nanok. Nanok is only for Americans, right? So you need to be an American citizen and you need to have, um, you need to be studying a degree towards a degree in the IT sector. So my suggestion there was why not open one or two spaces to bring in someone from a different country? So, I mean, as an IXP or working for an IXP, I'm not an IXP myself, as you can see, um, <laughs> but working for an IXP, I think it would be great to go out to a NANOC to see how they do things or going to an APNIC and see, oh, this is how they do things. And as you mentioned, UK NOF, um, PTN NOG, those are also relevant. I mean, it would be interesting to bring in those people to bring you know, to tell us, okay, this is what we do here, but that's what they do there, you know, to kind of learn from each other. Um, because if you keep it in a bubble, uh, yes, you are learning something, but not as much, if I can. That's my opinion. And I mean, agree, disagree. <laughs> um, I, I just think it would be a great idea to bring in that type of diversity into these kind of events and gatherings. Yeah, it was like I mentioned earlier, um, it would be great if they had like a particular event in a conference that was tied to younger people in the industry. Now for Nanog, I know they have the newcomers lunch. And I mean, there is value in that as well. But for the newcomers lunch, I mean, really, that's anyone new to Nanog, that doesn't mean they're new to the industry. So you can have people who have like 15 years of experience coming to the newcomers <laughs> lunch. They do. Too much. <laughs> yeah. That's a good um, so, that, I mean, <laughs> good point. <laughs> I'd go for the lunch. <laughs> I mean, I'm all for a lunch regardless as well, but <laughs> I just think that it, it would be great to have something where you could be a little more open about like your, you know, your insecurities around being at a conference like Nanog for the first time. Like, exactly. How do I navigate, you know, day two? Like, how do I, um, you know, meet? How do I know which chats to attend? You know, yeah. where to, exactly. which presentations are relevant to me? If you knew, you yeah. don't know these things. Like I this am my... going to cut you short, Keda. I'm sorry. I see it is five o'clock. Um, a lot of people will be um, leaving soon. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, please, if you have any questions, the chat is uh, open. Uh, Bijal, would you like to say goodbye and then we can go into Q&A for those who would like to stay? Yes, um, thank you um, for everyone. Um, I think uh, we will stay on for a few more minutes, but for those of you that have, um, have to leave already, um, I think um, I think this was a really really interesting and insight insightful discussion. I think you know I've been uh, speaking to Yolandi and and, their, and the rest of the panelists over the last couple of months, and I've um, just got so many ideas and I've learned so much and you know things small like you know small things I think we can all do. Um, you know some of the things that I've written down on notes with, and I think it would be really good to um, you know pick this up again. I mean, first of all, I just want to say as well that. Um, you know, when we put this um, panel together, we had a whole list of questions. I think Yolandi's actually just gone through two questions, maybe three. So, um, you know, so there is a lot more to discuss here. Um, so this, that's the first thing. Things that came to me during this um, uh, uh, session so far are things like, you know, maybe we need to have like a community mentor directory. Something where, you know, people from the community can sign up and say, yes, I've got time and I'm willing to be a mentor. And then we just put that somewhere um, that people can then access and, you know, the young people can use if they need to. Um, I mean, these are just ideas off the top of my head. Um, you know, I think we all need to make uh, more of an effort like, um, you know, when, when we do get approached, um, you know, the more experienced people, when they do get approached by uh, younger people to be, um, you know, more aware of, um, you know, that they are younger and they need to learn and they need that support. 
Um, and for the younger people, I guess they can take back the look, it's okay to ask us, you know, uh, ask, I say after the older experienced person, but it's okay to ask the, you know, community. And if you don't get a response from one person, try again, because, you know, not everyone is the same. And, um, you know, people also have di different busy periods in their work year life. So, you know, you may have caught somebody at a bad time. So, you know, try one more time. Um, something else and, and this is not something we touched upon too much on this chat but we did on yesterday's call and that was um, bridging the gap between um, universities and our industry um, you know yes uh, we, we, we kind of talked about this and um, you know there it, for people you know we've touched on degrees as well but there is that gap where Stavros mentioned that a lot of his colleagues from uh, uh, from university actually went on to different um, companies and not very few ended up in our industry and you know I think we need to look at why is that um, maybe we don't provide enough opportunity um, for university students to um, you know to come into our industry so maybe there's something we need to do there um, and I um, love the idea of the fellowship. I think that is something that we can all, um, you know, event organizers can naturally do right away. You know, we can say, yes, let's open up um, the fellowship for, you know, new people that have been um, at, at an, an organization who's newly started for a couple of years. We could get, you know, ask um, somebody to, uh, from their own company to sponsor or um you know um kind of um, express their interest in that person attending the meeting or or something like this but these are all just i guess high level ideas and things that i've just jotted down while i've been um listening and um you know like i said i think there is a lot more that we can discuss here um so i am going to pass it back to yolandi for final uh, questions and thoughts but um I think after we're done here, the panelists, we will kind of go away and um, look at what we've discussed and decide um, decide on how we want to um, um, move forward with this. Um, you know, maybe we will have a part two. We already talked about doing a part two um, on, on um, talking about uh, mm -hmm. people with diverse backgrounds who are entering the industry, so not just um, the younger people. Um, but I think there is still um, quite a lot to talk about here. So um, with that, um, I will pass back to Yolandi for final final comments and um, Q&A from um, the attendees. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Michelle. Um, so last questions, you guys are more than welcome to unmute if you'd like to ask a question. I uh, see here is one from Luca. Can we think of support to those who have the experience and time to be mentors, but don't know how to start and what are the best practices? That's a good question. That is something that we should look at, you know, to try and find the people that do have the time um, to be a mentor and kind of go from there. Uh, because it's not like you can just go to someone and say, I'll be a mentor. Like, okay. <laughs> right. Um, any other questions that I might have missed that you guys would like us to touch on? Sorry, it's me again. Yes, um, Dinesh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. um, um, one of the things, so, uh, get, you know, right, right to a, uh, uh, the right meetings have a very good fellowship program, and I can also do as well. Um, what we have done within UK North and DNSO Walk is that we've actually, even though we've put it in documents um, and said, look, if you're a student or if you're a newcomer or if you know, you're interested and you, you cannot afford, you know, we don't put stipulations on why you can or cannot afford to attend uh, a meeting, um, you know, then do approach us and we will likely, very likely give you um, a, a free registration. And if there is, if you're coming from afar, then we will pay for your train travel and the one night hotel and stuff. And we've, we've been doing that for a few years. The issue has been is that there's been very low uptake on that. So, I'm thinking, what are we missing? Where are we not advertising it? Um, you know, are there any other things that we should be looking at to make that better and make it much more inclusive? And, you know, so there are various things like that. And at the moment, we are working on strategy for 2021 and, and beyond. And it's a case of actually, you know, rather than as old crusty board members, it'd be nice to have um, feedback from 
um, the new entrants in the industry from the youngsters in the industry as to actually what should we be doing and what should we be looking at. So one thing is, is it okay to contact you as panelists after this if, if I'd like some feedback or some input on some things? And the other thing is, are you, are you in touch with others who may be able to help as well in that way? So from my side, you guys can always reach out to me. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> I've sent um, the request. <laughs> Will you accept it? Will you? Yeah, Not it yet. <laughs> the question. Um, so, <laughs> so I think um, from a from a NOV perspective, you know what I found because I also didn't know what a NOV was about, uh, and that is why I never showed an interest in it. Is exactly that I didn't understand what the NOV was about because I do follow a lot of the NOV pages and so forth, and um, you know, saying, "Oh, it's coming up. This is what we're doing," but. I don't see where we kind of saying why should we be attending? You know, what is the purpose of the NOC and why should newcomers be interested in attending? Um, I don't know if I'm, I'm saying it right, but I think that's kind of uh, what I would like to see is, is to see what is a NOC about? You know, why should we attend? Not just attend, it's very nice here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that, that's from me. I don't know. Um, from the other panelists, how do you feel about it? What do you think we can, or what strategies could you recommend? Yeah, when I, I mean, initially when I was, like, I gotten started into the industry, I had no idea about the NOGS at all. Like, I hadn't seen any kind of advertisements or anything like that. The only thing I'd heard from were people who had actually attended them. And when I saw some of the talks that were at the dogs, I was like, whoa, that is super over my head. And maybe I need like 10 more years of experience before I can, you know, go to one of these things because, you know, the people that were presenting, they were obviously like very experienced and they were talking about some very advanced level stuff. So to me, it just seemed like, okay, well, this doesn't, it doesn't really appeal to like my experience level right now. Like I still need the 101 and 102 courses before I can go <laughs> to like the advanced level courses. So I think it was just, it was the material and the lack of understanding about the conference at the time. Like I know that there are things that you can get into for newer people, like the newcomers lunch and beer and gear and stuff like that, and I'm speaking from Nanog, but when it comes to the material of the conference, even now, I still feel like the majority of it is very, very advanced. And for a new person, it just, they may not be able to retain that kind of information or understand it enough where it would appeal to them to return. Mm. I think also just, so just touching with what Kayla said, um, maybe broadening it a little bit more um, and having more talks um, focusing perhaps on um, different parts of the industry um, where people aren't more in technical positions or having, um, I don't know if it's possible, like a mentor-mentee kind of meetup thing where people in similar positions who do have availability or want to share their knowledge, um, you know, it doesn't have to be a a long-term relationship, but can kind of just share their knowledge or meet up and say what, you know, if you have questions or anything, you can send me an email or we can meet up or whatever the case is, um, just so that people, you know, they, they don't think that's, you know, so technical and you need this level of expertise to feel like you can join and you can learn from, you know, going there. And, you know, I just think it's, it's intimidating. Well, to be um, to defend a little bit my side, <laughs> <laughs> because I work as a network engineer, so I knew from the beginning what is a knock and uh, what the purpose. Oh, yeah, you know everything. Yeah, no, I don't know everything. Just actually, um, when I first joined my first nano. Uh, I was completely lost the first day because I saw the presentations and the people who uh, did this presentation having some uh, high-level positions in Microsoft, Google, Amazon, you know, 
presenting some super cool, very advanced topics, and I was walking around with a head down because, you know, <laughs> I'm a young guy in the industry, so I'm, what I'm doing with the, those sharks around, but okay. <laughs> You know how it is, right? I mean, this is how we start our career. Uh, you have to fight with the sharks. Um, yeah, but um, okay, there's um, pros and cons. I mean, Nox and uh, some meetings like that uh, should, for myself, should remain technical. There's a reason for being technical and there's a reason for advertising some uh, or presenting some advanced topics uh, because we live in a company and we have to fight with complex problems every day. And I'm talking this uh, as an engineer who fights every day with customer problems. And my customers are business to business. So, for example, Kyla, you're a customer of me because Netflix is connected to Amsix. And trust me, the problems that we fight is not something like, uh, okay, my internet is slow or I cannot see my video on uh, HD. <laughs> We have more complex problems to, to deal with. So this kind of presentations uh, might be advanced for a network uh, bidding, uh, bidding uh, facilitator, but they're useful for a network engineer. I think what uh, UriX and the bidding community is doing with uh, UriX and EPF is really good. Because you have a UIX meeting where we have mostly the network engineers and technical people doing uh, presentations, questions, answers, you know, trying to solve these uh, problems. But at the same time, you have the APF forum, which actually tries to uh, help the peering facilitators, peering coordinators, you know, to make their deals and establish their collaborations. Uh, in a less technical, more business-oriented uh, model. I have I had the chance to attend both meetings, Eurex for more than a time, and I think this is a really, really good uh, setup because everybody oh. finds uh, his space in an uh, environment to make his own uh, uh, agreements or to extract his own uh, knowledge and information. I like it very much. Uh, maybe we should uh, work as a community towards the same direction, maybe with other meetings. Uh, uh, maybe with uh, an ISPs to have their nano and also a second meeting most suitable for, uh, uh, you know, business uh, developers, building coordinators, uh, salespeople, you know, so, so they can talk their own language. At the same time, we can also talk our own language in our own meeting. I agree with Stavros. I think if we can attract the people to these NOC forums, um, eventually, you know, I think from repeatedly hearing the terms and what is said, you pick, you pick it up and you learn quite a lot. Um, I have uh, attended GRIX, RIPE, um, and a few other events where I also was like, what are they saying? I don't understand. But uh, it has been very beneficial for me because working um, at that Africa, um, you know, I'm kind of between the technical and the commercial side of things. And by attending these conferences, um, the, the presentation specifically, um, you know, I've learned quite a few things in the technical space of things. Um, and luckily, my uh, team, my colleagues, they usually have to explain it, you know, dumb it down a bit <laughs> to tell me what's going on. But it has been beneficial to me. And then the commercial side of things is when attending these meetings, as we discussed previously, you're meeting new people. And by meeting new people, you have more people to reach out to, to ask them questions about stuff you don't know. So I think... If we can get to a point where, um, you know, even though you go for the first time and you feel you don't understand, you don't belong here, to keep going to these kind of discussions, to get with the lingo and not just step away and say, it's not for me, because it is actually beneficial for you. Mm -hmm. I hope that helped, Dinesh. <laughs> uh, yes, it does. Um, and I think it's... Uh is going to be an ongoing thing um, as um, people say, you know, the culture changes and uh, we get uh, newer thought in, into the industry. But uh, thank you. Thank you all.
Okay. okay, so we've gone over time a lot. So thank you for the guys that stayed uh, around. Uh, I see a hand. <laughs> uh, and actually, um, also, I, I see a hand from Niall. And also, I just want to say, I think Luca has a really good point in the chat here. And that is that, uh, you know, can we think of support to those who have the expert experience and time to be the mentors, but don't know how to? Um, that's also true because like, you know, if somebody says, uh, you know, will you mentor me? It's like, well, what does that actually mean? Um, you know, what is a mentor meant to do? And maybe we need to have some sort of guidelines, on, um, guidelines or support on something that um, we can provide for mentors because, um, you know, people might be willing to be have or have that time, but don't know what it actually means. So thanks, Luca. It's something we, else we can look into. Uh, Neil, the last question, and I think we really need to uh, wrap up. <laughs> I wanted to comment. Uh, if, if, if the material seems bewildering, maybe it's because you're trying too hard. It could be. Try to, try to step back and see what's the problem these guys are trying to solve and are, does what they're saying make sense? Never mind that you don't understand the detail, but that brings you a step closer to where they are. And you can ask them in the coffee break or if it's, if it's a session like this, if it's a virtual session. Indeed, now that we've all gone virtual, the threshold for participation is much lower. You just need a couple of hours off work, not a whole week. <laughs> that's true it's the opportunities I think that's a good point uh, that yeah. is a good yeah. point yeah. I think that's what I had to do because I was also trying to go into the detail but I have no idea what they were saying <laughs> you got but, now, <laughs> but eventually like Neil has just said take a step back to actually understand what are they trying to what, is, what are they trying to achieve with the presentation that they are presenting which is, thank you, a very good tip for newcomers going to, um, to conferences. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember like my first Nanog, I was, I had just become a peering coordinator and I still was trying to understand all the terminology and just the, like what I needed to know. And I was in a peering gear and I walked up to, um, I believe it was Lynx, and I asked them what an IX was. <laughs> and they just looked at me. And like, uh, <laughs> um, okay. But but it led yeah. me into a great conversation, and I got to speak with the the person who was running the entire board for Links, and he let me know everything that was everything that he could tell me in a period of about ten minutes about IXs. <laughs> and about how they work with our industry and how they work with ISPs. I'm glad I asked. Like <laughs> at the time, it just felt like the stupidest question, but I was like, I gotta start somewhere. <laughs> and this is like, like, this is the first step. It's like, you're gonna look stupid at some point, but it's okay because you're new into the industry. How are you gonna learn if you if don't you ask? ask? Uh, Kayla, to play the devil's advocate, shouldn't you have a mentor before you go to this meeting <laughs> to guide you for some basic stuff? <laughs> you know, just playing the devil's advocate. I mean, of course, of course, you did the very correct thing for me. I mean, you asked like, even the stupid questions. That's why the meetings are to ask for. Mm -hmm. But yeah. about mentors and mentorship, I mean, I mean it's also free a little bad because you should have been informed and guided from your mentor before you go to be prepared as much as possible well my mentor's idea of preparing me was pushing me out into the crowd and saying go learn like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. i did <laughs> okay so we need mentors for mentors <laughs> <laughs> I'm mentoring the mentor that was, I mean, that was definitely like a few years ago. Like, I've, I've learned how an IX works since yeah. then. So, <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> changed, but it's just to, to lean in on that point of sometimes you just got to be okay with asking that dumb question. Just oh, yeah. To get to, you know, that place yeah. where you get a better understanding. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, any, a, anything else, guys? Um, we don't want to keep you guys on the call too long. Quick last remark. <laughs> um, I was watching some guy doing something on a, on a, on a, uh, out on a rock face one day, and I said, I had only just begun climbing. I said, please, can I ask you a stupid question? 
His answer was, there are no stupid questions, only stupid answers. So <laughs> that's true. Yeah, keep that's that in mind. Yeah. Exactly. You just got to have, like, you have that confidence. Yeah. All right. I think we are done. Any last comments from the panelists? I'll go. I see everybody looking at me on the screen. (laughs) 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 Um, So I think my last comment is um, I think we need to be more open as a community. to newbies and to do knowledge sharing um, and to give opportunities for uh, you know the newcomers to actually grow in the community um, and also to accept their friend requests on LinkedIn that's that's my comment <laughs> Kyla no. do you want to say anything no no Clarissa no, <laughs> Stavros, <laughs> say something. Oh, I think was Clarissa going to say. Uh, was Clarissa? No, gonna... I was just going to say that. Um, I don't know. I really enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to, you know, discussing new ideas of how we can approach um, the kind of mentor mentee um, wow. meetups in the future, and just kind of broaching that gap. So I think it's yeah. I really enjoyed it and I learned actually learned quite a lot. Good. That's good. Yeah, I really enjoyed it as well. It was a, it was a nice <laughs> panel discussion. Uh, completely different topic from what I'm used to. <laughs> but not uh, too technical for you. Not too technical. <laughs> yeah. But it was uh, it was fun and uh, you know, I, th- these are things that you actually struggle but you never have the time or the energy. Um, to, to to discuss them with other young people and actually now I see that okay problems that I faced in the past actually are common they exist they <laughs> exist <laughs> you know, all the trolls and all the stupid questions what Kayla said I mean it's uh, I mean I did the same so we all in the same uh, all we are in the same position it was good it was useful and just a message to the you know to the old guys in the industry. Um, <laughs> Oh, old guy. Old guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, old, you know. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah just consider us as uh, your team members. So we're not here to steal your jobs, for sure. We're here to help you and help our industry and the internet to go further. We can work together as a team to go one step forward. Uh, not here to steal anybody's job, right? <laughs> That's a good comment. Thank you, Stavros. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed all of this. This was a great discussion. And I haven't had to have a discussion like this before. So it's nice to be able to chat with younger people in the industry and talk about these real world issues that we're facing. And you know, it's good yeah. to get this in everybody's minds now, because these are the steps that we need to start taking to, you know, help the younger people transition into the more experienced roles so that the older people can eventually retire. I'm sure they want to at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm welcome to do more chats like this. And I hope we have excellent. more. Yeah, excellent. I think we will um, definitely look at doing a follow up. So thank you everyone so much. And um, apologies, it went on um, a little longer, but I think it was worth, um, I think it was worth staying, uh, staying on for that. Um, again, thank you. Thank you to our panelists. You've all been fantastic, um, you know, sharing your personal experiences and everything. It's been very, very insightful. Um, and I hope everyone um, can go away and, you know, make a small change um, to, uh, to, to, to help um, the young just uh, feel a bit more inclusive. With that, um, goodbye. Have a great rest of the week and I hope to see you all um, soon. Thank you guys. Bye. Have a lovely week. Bye. Have a good week. Bye.